did you have anything else? Um, not so far as like like mechanically, I don't think the like the last thing, and this would have to be done after the, like after routing the traces and stuff. But um, pouring that ground plane for a like a custom you know board shape like this would it be the yeah. same procedure as you know pouring the same ground plane for like a square or you know because for yeah, me I, I had to I had to like go to each of the individual points and route the uh, the ground plane like that kind of thing. Yeah, so you want to you want to use the the entire board and set up a, a, a single ground plane, right? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yes. So you would think that if we went through the same process of um, let me hold on, let's uh, try this again. Shift, Control A. Nope, that was wrong. Free. There we go. Now I want to hit Control A. So uh, to actually set up, uh, it's called a polygon pour. Uh, so if we click that, oh no, it's, it already deselected it. Yeah, so we obviously don't want to do it on the outline layer. We want to do it on the... Uh, what top I looking layer. For? Yeah, top layer. I think it's on the top uh, layer. There we go. Thank you. <laughs> Ironically. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so here we went like there's no, it's the odd, you know, it's default is that there is no uh, it's not connected to anything. So we want to go through and find ground. Yep. And just as a good habit, uh, there's good practice. We want to change the name to uh, outline. We don't want that. Uh, just call it copper pour. Dash ground. Yeah, so we went on the top, top layer. So if we were actually still in the outline layer, you know, we noticed that we could change it back. And even if you actually do the whole pour, <clears throat> excuse me, even if you do the the, the entire pour, uh, you can you can still go back and, and edit it. And uh, so the, um, I haven't found a, a good way to actually just kind of like select a particular line. Like even if you drew a circle and selected it, and you know uh, used the uh, define as uh, it just I haven't really gotten it to work. Uh, so even with something like this, I would actually just go up into the top corner, and I would just do straight lines. And we're just going to surround the whole thing. So when it actually gets manufactured, it won't. Um, like it'll actually. Did I get that? Okay. That should be good. Um, so we're just going to uh, basically make a square over the whole thing, and uh, pull it off to the side after I've done the fourth corner, and click uh, right click. And I think we're on just single layer view. Reset your filter. Oh yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, so that means you have all of your uh, all of the ground connections uh, are uh, ground points are uh, connected, so you can actually see it has, got, has these little uh, thermal thermal relief connection points. Uh, so these are done so that you know uh, so that the solder actually melts here. So if you imagine if uh, if this had just uh, you know a solid piece of uh, copper all the way around it, if you were soldering it or it's going through a um, uh, uh, an infrared oven, so to actually solder it all, all simultaneously, or a reflow oven, uh, the, the heat is just going to be wicked away from the, the solder at this point. Uh, so it's just a, a way of thermal relief. Um, okay. That's uh, yeah. So then, if you like, you, you can do this at any point. Uh, no pun intended. And uh, so, uh, if I were to, if we were to go back, oops. So we're on the top layer. If I were to go back and just start doing some routing, let's just say. Uh, so and then I right click. So then it's yeah, it, it's uh, you can start off by doing all of the the ground. It's it's probably not the uh, the best way to do it. Just you know, it just gets in the way. So you can make it uh, unpoured. Uh, so that just means you know, it's you can actually see on the on the edge that you know the the line's still there. Uh, and actually, we don't have it right to the edge, but uh, that's actually probably preferred because uh, if you imagine um, if you have copper, let's say you have uh, power and ground. You've got a four-layer board. Your two of your inner layers are power and ground, uh, and, and, and it cuts right to the uh, and it goes right to the edge of the board. You could actually short out the the circuit uh, by a piece of metal touching the edge of the board. Uh, so when you're doing a copper pour, it might you know it's probably best practice to do it just a little bit inside the board or inside the uh, outline layer. So the manufacturer they also use this uh, outline layer to actually uh, route through. 
you know, with within some some amount of tolerance. Uh, but if you're, but uh, let's say that was our last trace. You want to go repour. You just uh, click this. Then you just uh, do repour all, and then so it repours it. Okay. I wasn't sure if there was like a way that you know, like we did with the outline, like we made a trace or a track, I should say, a track and some arcs around like what we want the board shape to be and then have like, you know, a polygon pour, just pour that shape. Yeah, so you can do like, I, I was just lazy and didn't do a notch. So uh, I just undid it. Uh, so we can actually go and uh, restart it. So ground. But you're awesome. saying that we could have just stuck with the square and because we have our outline shape cut out, like it would still pull, it would still keep everything, you know, as like that, that ground plane. But once the outline goes around and like the, the machine routes the board itself, it doesn't really matter if there's that excess copper pour. Yeah. And it's probably one of those, it might not be the best way to do it, but like you could just go straight across, but you can also uh, click here and then kind of go up. And we'll just go, and we'll go up to that. Uh, so it does, you can do 45 degree angles. Like I could go here and then, you know, here. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm fairly, I'm much more closely, let me zoom in. So I'm much more closely approximating it. Uh, Cause you might, uh, I, I don't know, like they, you know, if, if they're laying out the board when they manufacture it, they're going to um, lay it out so that it's, um, hold on, let me yeah, do that. Yeah. Uh, so like, let's say they're making some really tiny boards. And so they're going to look at, um, you know, where, where can, if they're building a large panel and they're going to say like, okay, we'll put your board in the corner. You know, uh, let's say Bob down the street, you know, is uh, building a, like a thin board. They might say like, Hey, look, we've got a gap here so we can actually squeeze a board in there. So it's more efficient for them to actually, you know, um, use every little nook and cranny they can. Yeah. Uh, as long as they you know, they know they can you know, they can route out both. But if you have, you know, if you're just lazy and, and throw the copper in there, uh, they might not be able to do that. That might that might prevent them from putting something in there. Um, it's it's be like something a little bit more pronounced if you had like a large. Let's say we're building a ring light, so you've got like a, a large circle, but the PCB is only let's say an, an inch an inch wide. So you've got this large circle in the middle that uh, it's it's just copper. So that might prevent them from uh, they, uh, from actually putting anything else in there just because you were lazy. Uh, I could be wrong. They, they might have ways where they can just override and just and delete it themselves. But again, that might cost them uh, more time because they have to go back and edit something. But again, I don't know. I've, I've never actually made a board uh, or at least, um, you know, been involved in a company that does. There's a bunch of YouTube videos that are really interesting, but um, yeah, again, that's uh, beyond the scope here. Okay. Yeah. I mean, Obviously, I'll have to revisit this, you know, whenever I have everything traced out and everything. But yeah. I think that's a really good start for, like, the questions that I had. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm sure I could go on and on about other very specific questions. But we can, you know, I'll, I'll work on this and we can maybe revisit this in the future. Sure. But, but otherwise, you, I'd, uh, I would just like to say you're, uh, uh, like, you know, not to diminish what you're doing, but, it's, you know, it's a relatively simple board. And it's, um, you know, it's always good to start with something. It doesn't have a gajillion components, uh, but your, your your layout is pretty good. It's nice and organized. Uh, like, you know, it's not just willy nilly. Uh, obviously, like you're defined by like, you know, the dimensions of this and where this is placed and all that kind of stuff. But yeah, you know, it's, um, you know, like you could actually, you could just sandwich these together because uh, these, um, well, depending on what you're using, you know, these kind of, um, uh, we call it block, screw block terminals. Uh, oh, yeah. A lot of times they have like these little dovetail tabs, and so you can actually just line them up. Uh, but uh, you know, that's uh, I think at a certain point, that's that's really getting nitpicky um, or just uh, you know very particular. Uh, but still, it looks really nice and clean. Um, yeah, it makes sense. Like you know, this is probably what your your power jacks and stuff like that. And yep. uh, this is going to be uh, are these little yeah those are probably potentiometers. Yeah, they. I, I thought they had like a nice um, schematic or a nice three D model, but I, obviously not. Um, yeah, yeah, they're just supposed to be like little trim pots. You know, J three and J two connectors go to your um, laser diodes. Um, okay. And the laser diodes, like they're in like a line, so that it projects lines on your three D model. That's then spinning on a stepper motor, 
and each step the uh, the camera of the the Raspberry Pi is gonna be taking a picture. So it'll go around like a full revolution taking pictures at each of those steps. And I think you can configure it in um, in, in, uh, in the Pi. So you can set like the three pins that set your resolution for the stepper motor, you know, to a finer resolution. You know, you'll get more steps um, per revolution, but it should also give you a more resolute like 3D model at the end whenever you stitch all those pictures together yeah so yeah the, just the trim pots are just for like the intensity of like the laser light just to see, you know either a brighter or dimmer like line on your object so but, all right um but yeah i mean this is just like a, a schematic i ripped off the internet but you know yeah it's still. a lot nicer than making it on like a variable or something right yeah and that's one of the real advantages of uh um, you know, once you can start making your uh, printed circuit, uh, your own printed circuit boards, you know, it really becomes, uh, it opens up such a larger um, capability of what you can actually make, different kind of components you can use. Uh, so it's uh, like I've got all these, uh, like I grew up building you know, all these, uh, you call them vera boards, prototyping boards or whatever, where it's just like, you know, it's just one big rectangle and it's just got holes uh, laid at, you know, 0.1 inch increments. And um, you know you solder it, you solder wires together, and even you get you can make some simple circuits. It's nice because then you can, uh, like if it's just a one-off, uh, you you can build it fairly quickly in an afternoon. But you know, uh, but again, you're it's you're limited to through-hole components, and now there's manufacturers certain components they they're not going to build them through-hole because they're just too big and chunky. Uh, like you like you think about like uh, MEMS microphones, um, uh, or all kinds of like accelerometers, different sensors. Uh, lipo chargers, all kinds of stuff. It, it, they're only going to make them uh, surface mount. So, um, you know, once you can actually start making your own components, and uh, uh, um, you, or sorry, once you start making your own uh, printed circuit boards, uh, it really opens up wh uh, what you, you're uh, capable of doing. So, yeah, this is uh, I think uh, like hobbyists are doing this a lot more. Like it's cheap. Like JLC is just so dirt cheap. It's in, it's ridiculous. Um, like one of the things, I don't know if it'll show up in the video, but I had a pop-up in there that said, uh, um, you know, the DHL, um, I think they were supposed to deliver it yesterday, but they're delivering today maybe uh, some PCBs I ordered. I finished those last Saturday, um, and there are two, there are two uh, different PCBs with uh, laser-cut stencils, and they're made in China. I think the total price was $60. Uh, and that most of the price was actually shipping because the, the stencils are large, they're like a square foot. Um, I think it was like $40 in shipping. So the stencils cost $7 a piece. The boards cost, I think, um, I, I think I got ordered uh, uh, 10 of each. Uh, those were like 10 bucks. So like um, right there, the cost, less than half the cost was the actual materials themselves. Uh, the rest of it is, is in shipping. And but it's still, I mean, what you're getting for 60 bucks from, so, from something on the other side of the planet in less than a week is insane. It's crazy. So anyway, that's enough of me just kind of uh, uh, nerding out. <laughs>